Thea Vidal coming into the uh, studio. It's just early in the morning. Yeah, it is early, um, isn't it? I feel it? like a vampire, <laughs> except there's no sun. So this is if you are a living uh, undead, uh, this is your time to walk out. There's no sun. You know, I have so much to talk to you about. I'm, I've been reading up. You've had a, quite the life, Thea has. And uh, by the way, you are one of the guys on our show who's the strangest guy you've ever met. I don't know if they told you this, but his name's Jeffrey. He's the, literally the strangest guy you will ever meet. Uh, you are, if not his favorite, but one of his favorite comedians. Okay. So we're going I'm to, he's, he's sequestered right now, and uh, we're going to see if he comes in. If he, because uh, he's so strange, I don't even know if he came into the studio, even though she's his favorite comedian, I don't know if he would recognize her. Right, his eyesight it's, isn't it's that good. That stra- well, he's that strange of a guy. It's morning, and I'm not dressed up or anything, so, well, you know, and and if he recognizes me, good. If he hears my voice, he should recognize me. Yeah. If not, then, oh, well, maybe. You slap him. Yeah. You know, I got this cane. Beat him with here. that cane. I, yeah. I love this cane. This is so pimpish. Anyway, what's what's the cane for? Do you have trouble I, w- I, moving I around? I messed or? up my knee. What happened? I had knee, I knee, knee surgery. Yeah, that, that's no Be, good. That, no, well, actually, it started with something simple, and I dismissed it because I act like I'm 21. And, uh, however, I do not shop there, Forever 21. (laughs) And some of you older women um, shopping at Forever 21, knock it off, really. (laughs) Knock it off. (laughs) Anywho, um, and uh, I dismissed it, and it shouldn't have been dismissed, and I need... So you let it fester, and then it ended up that you needed to go get surgery. Yes, I needed to get surgery. And so, you know, big deal, be over, no time. Um. You've been doing comedy for how long now? It's been quite a while. 30 years. 30 years. Yeah. How's, it, how's it changed in 30 years? Well, I think that um, the younger ones don't get it. They don't have the passion for it. It's not their passion like I would say it is for some of us that started in the 80s. Mm-hmm. We'd, have, we'd have done it for water, you know what I'm saying? Uh, thank you, baby. She's so sweet. I hope y'all don't treat her like a dog, <laughs> and uh, or the help, whichever. And uh, I don't think they have the same passion we had, and I don't think that they're they're a, a team. We're not. They're you know we, as comics when I started, we would help each other. We would you know we would see how the other far how far the other one would go, mm-hmm. and. I can remember T. Sean Shannon, who writes for Saturday Night Live, and other comics going, Thea, say this, say this, and see what'll happen. And they would just test me to see if people would still laugh. It was like having a bunch of big brothers teaching you how to say swear words to see if who's going to laugh. Mm. And and I love them. And now I there's not it. that camaraderie. It's not. Anymore. There's no camaraderie, and it's a lot of uh, a lot of sharks out here. You think that a lot of these people that are younger comedians now are using it in order to try to maybe get something else? They want to become an actor, or they want to become yeah, something. Yeah, I, I, I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, but I mean, if you gonna steal everybody else's jokes, then that's not being a comedian. That's you, being a thief. And I'm not saying that comedians can't have the same premise. However, I, you ain't going to say my joke word for word and think it's okay. Have you ever had anyone rip off yes. some of your jokes? You do. Do you confront the person about it? Not only do I confront, not only have I confronted, I've threatened them. You did. With bodily harm. You mm-hmm. said, I'll beat you with this cane if you, no. if you don't knock yeah. it No, I said, I will shoot you. Really? I did. Who, I mean, who, who ripped I'm you not, off? Would we know who it is? Yes, you do. It is. It's somebody famous, but he doesn't do it anymore. And so what was their reaction? What was his reaction? His reaction was his surprise that I caught him. And it was someone I love very dearly, and I still love him. Did you see? Do you don't have less? Re- do you do you have less respect for him now because of this? No, I think it's something that his career is moving so fast that sometimes when you sometimes when your career is moving so so fast, it's Kevin Hart. That's who it yeah. is. Not, I know who, it's no, not Kevin no, it's Hart. Not Kevin Hart. We have nothing in common. He could never take anything from me because he has nothing in common. He's, with his me. career is moving super fast. I though, mean, like it? the like lightning bolts. Yeah, yeah. But he's funny, and I I enjoy him. This person was younger and considerably younger, and I understand. I, I'm a for as you get older, you understand things. Yeah, 
and I'm passionate and I am patient now. I'm getting I'm as you get older, you you um you're more patient and you're more mature and you get things uh better than most folks do, mm-hmm. you know. You know, I'm not I'm not where I'm young where I just go, you know, pistol with people like I used to. <laughs> you know, it's not I'm I'm older now. Did I you really li- have you ever literally pistol whipped someone? I mean, that's pretty someone badass has, if you have. Someone has accused me of such a thing. Really? Yes. But I'm too old for that and I was young when that happened and and I don't recall it really well. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Texas. In Texas. And I was born in Washington D.C., Walter Reed Hospital. I'm a military brat. Yeah. And uh, my father retired, and we retired in Victoria, Texas. <laughs> Your father was not a nice guy, it doesn't sound like. To me, no. Why Why do you think? Because you always pick the one kid you don't like. You had to, How many brothers and sisters did you have? I have four biological and three adopted. Okay. So there's, it was a big family. Well, the adopted part is the family that adopted me into their hearts. Oh, okay. So, so I include them. You, when you were growing up, you had th- uh, three brothers and sisters, and I four, have four, four sisters. Okay, uh, and your your father liked you the least out of all of your sisters. I would say so. Yes. Did he tell you that? Uh, yeah. Really? He said, "In no son terms, he said, who would want you?" I mean, that has to mess with you as a kid, right? Yeah. Uh, do you think that that deeply affected who you are as a person today? Like, can you ever get I, over I, something like I that? Think, I think that, you know what, let me tell you something. And this is, the, and, the, and I'm going to say this, and this is not to lecture people. I'm going to say this. What you say to your children when when they're young and when they're vulnerable. She's just like Jeffrey. And, Her cell phone goes uh, off while she's on the air. And <laughs> what you say to to children it has a refle- it reflects to them when they get older. Mm-hmm. They do. And for a long time, I did think some of the things my father said was true. You know, and then I got on TV and he was wrong. So there you have it. Did you, you, you felt almost like a second class citizen in your own home, it sounds like. Yeah, I got kicked out at 15. I mean, I've been on my own for a long time. Time. He he was uh, abusive towards you. I mean, yeah. physically abusive, not yes. only verbally and and emotionally. Yes, and but I phys- married just what I knew. Yeah, I I was going to bring that up, but but you got <laughs> married later in life. I and- got married at eighteen oh, to escape. So you get married at eighteen, <laughs> just, and, I, and you marry a guy who ends up being just like your father, ab- abusive. Yeah. Yeah, and you know what? And uh, I jumped out of the fire into some mo fire. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, you know what? I did really love my children's father. I adored him. He just didn't get it, and he's ten years. The worst thing a family can do is show an abusive husband that they don't love their child. Mm. And my husband, he told the children, he goes, your par- your grandparents can't stand your mother. <laughs> really? I just, and they knew, they grew up knowing that. Yeah. Did- knowing that. And you know what? And, um, and it's funny. Uh, I can, I can laugh about, I mean, I laugh about it, but some days I don't laugh about it. Did you have to go through, uh, Thea Vidal's here with us. She's going to be at the Funny Stop uh, Comedy Club tonight and tomorrow, yes. 8, 8 and 10.30. How did 30. you find out all this information about my life? Oh, I have researchers. <laughs> we you... pay big bucks for this stuff. Oh, stop it. Did, did, so do you think, did you have to go through therapy, I guess, uh, well, throughout life? Well, because you know this what? is serious I, this stuff. Is, I mean, my life was very, very serious, and, um, and despite everything, I'm like a, you know, I, let me digress for a minute. It took me, I was talking to a girl for one time, and we were talking about my life, and uh, I was just talking about, a matter of fact, my husband had hit butt me, and da 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 and my dad, you know, did this, and da da Just like, you know, like we're talking about uh, what kind of, what we want on our sandwich. <laughs> and she stopped me, and she goes, Thea, uh, do you know that's not okay? And I go, oh, I lived through it, I'm okay. And she goes, no, 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 back up. Do you really understand this is not okay? And I guess if if you're abused enough, you just kind of go, okay. Yeah. And and it's not okay. It was it didn't hit me till 
a few years ago how how treacherous my life is. Been. So it really took you. It took That's you me a long time. All, th- 35, 40 years to really uh, I, put everything into perspective. Well, you know what? I'm going to tell you something. When um, and and this sounds crazy because if you become so used to abuse, it's like every day, and you just kind of. Do, 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 and keep going. Yeah. Oh, well, he did this. Okay. Now, will I take somebody putting their hands on me? Oh, no. I will Not put, anymore. I will put one in you. <laughs> yes, I will. And I, I have no problem with putting one in you. I, I sleep with a Bible, a bag of weed, and my and a gun. I do because I will pray for you. Oh, I'm going to shoot you, but I'm going to pray for you, and then I'm going to need a, a joint. I'm going to need one because I need to, to pray about this, and then I'm going to uh need to be have a buzz on <laughs> I'm, I'm a firm believer that you should have a buzz on well it, it, you know that this wow this is extraordinary that it, it, it took you that long to come to grips with everything and it, it, it i think i, mean, I think these... you know what happens i think what happens is that you keep if as long as you're working 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 you don't have time to think about it mm-hmm. but when work slowed up right. reality uh, hit me. right right and i went oh my god so I've been ta- I met recently I remember I met my child psychologist. Oh yeah. And his name is Terry Peterson. He lives in Victoria, Texas. And he said, "Thea, it's time for you to write your book because you should I told you fools um, his phone's phone. going off. It's just like Jeffrey. I'm, I'm just, I'm his phone rings. Phone. Yeah, Jeffrey's I'm, phone I'm, rings. I'm just like, stop. you know, I told you I'm on the radio, man. <laughs> I'm trying to be on the radio. And um, um, and if I did not have stand-up, I don't know what I would do. You know, that you bring up a good point because... I look. I I had nothing like the childhood that you did. Uh, the, the 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 worst. You know, I had a single mother who had me when she was seventeen. But my you know my mother loved me very much. My grand her parents grandparents loved me very much. I had a a pretty good childhood. I I felt like an outcast. I didn't fit in. I I wasn't. Uh, super popular. I was you know that that was the the worst of it. And I didn't have a, a father, uh, but. I think that getting into radio, and I've always wanted to be on radio since I was eight years old, it's sort of been, I, I've never gone to any therapy. This is my therapy, really, doing this show every day. And I'm assuming that comedy is like that for you. This is uh, That's like my, uh, my favorite, 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 favorite drug of choice. And when I get up on stage, and see, I, I like to think of some of the things I say about my children. Uh, they are rough. They are very rough. But however, they are a cautionary tale. Because when I had when I did the TV and I was making a lot of money, I and, and I'm still working. I'm and I'm still gonna. I still believe I'm gonna get back on TV. And you know why? Because uh, Betty White can be on TV at 91, <laughs> and Bill Cosby can go back on TV, and he's 85. Uh, why can't I be back on TV? Rodney Dangerfield didn't hit it till he was like in his 50s, and so. I have a lot of faith in me, and my thing is this. I know a lot more now than I did sure. before. You you had a television show called Thea, which, yes. which was on for a season. Yes. Um, you made a lot of money on that, I'm, I'm guessing? I made more money than I have ever made at that time in my life, but you know what? By today's standards, no. Yeah. Not by today's standards, I don't think I would have, what you could, what I would have called a lot of money. Because these guys are making a hundred a million dollars an episode, and so no, I was not making that kind of money. And it was remember, it was the first season, and you had to work up to that kind of money. You know what I'm saying? Would you do in hindsight? Would you do anything differently uh, now that you know so much? What you know now in life? Would you have changed anything in your career? Yeah, a couple things. What? I would have never trusted as many people as I thought were my friends. How'd they screw you over? What'd they do to you? Abandon me, yeah. just like everybody else. Yeah. You know, just when you, but the the thing of it is, is that when they did it, um, it was not something that I wasn't familiar with. It was not something I wasn't, so, so I've been abused by my father. I've been abused by my husband. Uh, get in line. Okay. Yeah. That was my attitude. 
My husband uh, pulled a machete on me. Huh? Get over yourselves. Those little things you do are inco- in- inconsequential. Uh, some of the, I will say this, some of the most foolish things I have done have been in search of love. And that's the most nat- that's the most natural thing that we're as human beings. That's what we crave. We crave to be love and part of something. Well, especially if your father never showed you any love. Your father's abusive to you, physically abusive. He'd be beating you. He'd uh, you know, you're in search of that. And any sort of affection that you get, even from a jerk, a jerk like the guy it, that you were married to. Too. You, is you, better than no attention right. at all. And that's how women have but I'm I'm very fortunate. All my children have the same father. And uh <laughs> not that I'm dogging you hoes out there. I'm just saying. Um I'm just saying, you know, I understand how you get in them dilemmas and whatnot and everything. I would myself uh you know, I can speak to a lot of things on every level because I have enough insight to why people do what they do like people talk i was watching dr drew mm-hmm. i can't stand him him nancy grace i love to watch him because they're so arrogant i and can't so nancy grace i can't stand I could she's just the worst choke the dog mess out of her <laughs> it's like shut up you blonde twit uh you know but let me tell you something okay when philip seymour hoffman died okay Everybody was well, you know, he was clean for 23 years, and he, they found all this heroin in his room. And the, 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 the. You know what? Y'all can talk about all the ya ya you want, but you never hear them tell the truth about the drugs. People use drugs, people drink, because it makes them feel good. Yeah. That's the whole bottom line is people want to feel good. And if this is an avenue where I can feel good and I don't have to listen to your mouth, this is the avenue. Knew I'm gonna take, yeah. and you know, and then Dr. Austin and I'm all trying to get all metaphysical. Well, I think he died. You know, shut up. He was in pain. Didn't nobody ask him what was bothering him? Yeah, and that's the truth. You know, everybody. You know, you got time to text, but you ain't got time to talk to me. <laughs> right. You know, if I wanted to write you a letter, I'd have wrote you a letter. You know what I'm saying? You, your husband pulled a machete on you. Yeah, I, I, I want to hear that story, but let me let me bring Jeffrey in real quick. I want to see if Jeffrey can we bring him down. Uh, have Jeffrey? We'll just keep him in the hallway and do like. Should we have him go in the hallway and ask twenty questions to see if he can figure out who it is, or should we just bring him in and see if oh, he? Oh, let this man come in. Well, and let's see bring me. him in. Let's yeah, bring him. Okay. In. If let's he hears her in. voice, I think he's going to recognize her. Right. So let's see I if he just. I think he would recognize right. my right. voice. Let's bring turn that that uh, speaker down out there and it's let's off. let's bring uh, Jeffrey in. You are one of his favorites. What are we doing with him? Bringing him, Bring him into the studio. In the studio. Right. Okay, Let's, cool. I want to see what his reaction is and see if he realizes what's going on. But you're one. You're one of his favorites of all time. He quotes you all the time. He talks about seeing you. He loves and he's the strangest guy you'll ever okay. meet. Here he is in the black sweatshirt. Uh, come on in, uh, Jeffrey Laroque. Come on in. Do you know who this is? Hi, Jeffrey. Thieva Dog. Yes. Wow. Yes. He knew right away. Yes. Hi, Jeff. How, How you, doing? you doing, baby? I've been a fan of your comedy since like 1989. Oh, my God. When you had the Tina Turner look. Oh, I know. <laughs> and today I have the help look. And thank you. I, it's too, you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. It's too cold to be sexy out here. And I know it's Valentine's Day, but, you know, I'm going to tell you, ladies, just show your breasts and that's it. That's it. <laughs> Don't be trying to wear no short skirt and no heels and stuff because you'll fall on your butt and that'll be a done deal. And then, you know, nobody's going to be happy later on that night. You know what I'm saying? Jeffrey, you love, you've loved Thea. You've brought her up. I'll be honest with you. He, he, one time, he, the first time I ever even heard your name, I'll be honest with you, was five, six years ago, Jeffrey goes, I go, Jeffrey, who's your favorite comedian? He goes, Thea Vidal, without even, and and I go, I, I don't take offense to this, Thea. I go, who? What? <laughs> I, I mean, it's just, I, I, I was expecting, you know, I, I don't know what I was expecting, but so he's, I'm sure you're honored to finally I meet am very her, right? to meet you, though. Do some of her I and I are big, both big fans of because I, I saw you, I saw, I watch a lot of your videos on YouTube, a lot of your comedy and everything. Uh-huh. And one of my favorites is the one you're doing, what they call the Nasty Show, and somebody was talking smack, somebody from your was talking smack to Bobby Slate in the pit bull of comedy. Uh-huh. And you come out on stage and you go, well, you talking bad to Bobby? You want to talk bad to me? 
That's a good answer because I will f your monkey ass <laughs> up. Oh my, you, you, that sounds so much. You know, I wish I could lie and say I didn't say that, but you know what? That is me. That is me. You know what? And that day, Bobby, they was giving Bobby's the Willie, and when I came out, that said, "Well, say something then." <laughs> you know, and when I get on, I work for Carnival now, and um, cruise. Uh, yeah, the cruise me. lines. Yeah, yeah I work for yeah. Carnival Cruise Line, and uh, it's funny because. I do a family show, believe it or not, I do a family show. And I said, some of you kids are going to come up missing. Anyway, and <laughs> you think your family brought you out here because they love you. they trying to push you in some water. That's what they're going to do. <laughs> Mommy and Daddy's sick of you. And, uh, and, I, and I asked the parents, I go, are you having trouble with your teenage child? It is, because it's 13, 14, that's when they get mouthy. Yeah. And I said, uh, and the mother said, she's kind of, she gets real mouthy. And I could tell by her disposition that she does get mouthy. And uh, I looked at her and I said, uh, come up here. And I said, Caitlin. And she looked at me. I said, you got something you want to say to me? <laughs> and she said, and, and I asked them to say yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am to me. Because I'm I'm older and I'm not your friend and you came by a round of Listen, drinks. Listen, these kids these days are so disrespectful. Oh my God, I can't believe it. The I, kids are running the household, Thea. They're, they're the kids mine. are like the parents and they're pushing the parents around and these parents are are running around catering like they're I the will. friggin' butler to these Let kids. Let me tell you right. something. My mother didn't read me no fairy tales. She wrote she read me the book of bills. <laughs> now you see this bill right here? This is the mortgage. Your daddy pays that so that we can live inside as opposed to tents. <laughs> and this is a big mo oh look this bill. This is the this is the grocery bill. It's $175. And, and this is so or oh, we could send you to Africa where they could feed you fifty <laughs> cents a day. But no, we want you to have cookies and chips. You know what? Let me let me take a quick break. Uh, I'm normally I would keep going, but we do have an affiliate station that drops off at ten o'clock, so I have to let them bow out gracefully. Uh, I'm going to come back with Thea Vidal, who's going to be at the Funny Stop Comedy Club tonight and tomorrow night, eight o'clock and ten thirty. For tickets, call three three zero nine two three forty seven hundred. Jeffrey is just grinning from I ear know. to ear. I know, over and here. I didn't even he touch loves, him on nothing. Oh, I didn't man. touch him on nothing. Well, he had to sit down because he was aroused. He, <laughs> lo he <laughs> loves black women too. That's uh, his he, thing. Boy, he I loves. Will break you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can break me anytime you want. <laughs> it's easy to say, I'm you try. Remember, remember what, I remember. Remember in some of your comedy where you, where you talk about some, some of the skinny chicks in the audience? He goes, he goes, how, how, goes, how you, how you thin bitches doing? He goes, you know, a big woman like me, I take your man from you. <laughs> he knows. I can't. I can't he, oh, he he will remember. He, he, Jeffrey will tell you. He could probably tell you dates that you've done comedy. He's 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 kind of like Rain Man. Uh, he's 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 just like that. Let me take a quick break. I think uh, we're gonna open up the uh, bottle of Jim Beam here for Thea Vidal. Uh, she goes, what, what kind of uh, liquor is that? I just want a little tasty taste. Yeah, open that up, uh, Dieter. Get her. Uh, yeah, do you want to get you a glass? Yeah, put, some, to put, a little, put a couple of rocks in it for me. If, yeah, little, if we yes, have to. Yes, do what I say. Do what I don't ask me. No That's right. Questions. Run, uh, 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 <laughs> and he ran and he's Now, you've made a couple of references it. to the help uh, earlier, like the movie or yeah, the book and I whatnot. Did. Look at the way that things have changed. Here you are. You're 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 telling him what to do, and he just jumped. He's like, "Yes, him. Yes, him. He's going. He's finding the ice cubes." Well, he <laughs> should. And um, it, no, I'm telling. I'm, I'm telling you. Let me say something. I saw the movie. Uh, I saw the movie The Help, and let me tell you something. I was born in 1956. I know for a fact they'd have lynched me, and I'm going to tell you why. Because <laughs> when them women was talking. And acting like this, uh, the the ladies that were passing the food around didn't exist. Uh, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm hitting you with some hot grits. I'm just hitting you in the head. You wouldn't have been uh, able to take it. I wouldn't have been able to take it. And I applaud my ancestors for being able to take it. I just watched. I, I didn't watch the whole thing. It was on HBO last night. I caught a, a scene from the movie Forty Two about Jackie Robinson. And I, I, can, I can Holy move. moly, what they were doing to that guy when he <laughs> came up. You know, one of my best friends. This sounds so cliche. He's why he goes. I could. I couldn't watch Twelve Years of Slavery. I couldn't. Do, I couldn't watch it because I felt so dirty. I said, Well, <laughs> you know. Kill your dad for me. And um, <laughs> no, I'm teasing. I, I took me three days to watch it. Yeah. It took really? me three days to watch you, it. You got so emotional while you were uh, watching it. Was it was really, especially the part where she says, I want you to do me a favor. 
I want you to take me to the swamps and strangle me and put me under the water until I'm dead. And I'm like, you know, Master, it ain't like he carrying no weight between his legs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You could work it out. You could work it out. You could pretend. Women been pretending for years. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's so big. Oh, you're so <laughs> masterful, Master. You know, I'm just like, I was watching the movie and I couldn't think of... I, I I couldn't think of anything. There was no way I could have laughed through that. I, you, I just was. Well, you, I, the, real, Thea, you were, yes, go ahead, Dom. I was just going to ask, like that 12 years of slave versus a movie like Django. Were, I you, fell out. I fell out. Me and my daughter were the only two black people there. We was watching a bunch of sea of old white people. Remember, going, remember when we could hit them in the head like that? Remember that? <laughs> Ooh, that was a good old age. We could pop them in the head just like that. They, they couldn't do nothing. We could call them all kinds of things, like baby. You could call them all kind of names. They couldn't do nothing but just take it, just take it. But you, and, so, and I saw an old white couple making out to the movie. That's what scared me. I say, ooh, white folks must miss it. You, you before you got into comedy, when you were a, a young girl, you worked in a restaurant. You were a waitress. In Pasadena, Texas, where if you know anything about the history of Pasadena, Texas, you know this really isn't that bad. They used to have a sign that said, don't, N-word, don't let the sun go down on you. It was on 60 Minutes, in case you think you, would, you can reference it. You, would, you worked in this restaurant, and Three members blocks. of the KKK would come in. Yes. In their robes. Well, they, they wouldn't have their I, hoods they wouldn't on. Have, they, would, they wouldn't have the regal, all the regalia on, but you knew they were clan. And you served them? Yes, it is. They would allow you to serve them, uh, I uh, guess? There were a few that would not come in, and then there were a few that would come in and think they could taunt me, but I could out-verbally maneuver them. Did, um, Did they give you a good tip? Uh, it wasn't until much later. Did you ever, sp- I mean, you, you spit in their food or whatever when they came in? Nah, not necessary. No, you didn't. No, I'm a, I'm, you know, I'm above certain things, you know. Um, I, you know, sometimes they were found missing and stuff. But you know, <laughs> you know I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a true story. Um, I was working there, right? And um, I, they got used to me. And my great grandmother used to say, if you love somebody long enough and hard enough, they're either going to change, or they're the devil. So, um, I used to work there and. And I would smart off, and I knew two policemen that would come around midnight, or as I call it, the lynching hours, because I worked from 10 to 6, mm-hmm. and anything can happen 10 to 6, right. you know. So um, they would come in and drive around looking on me. And I remember uh, a lot of the people came in, and, it, and I was I was... I was I was like Waffle House. I was the cook, the waitress, the the cashier. I was everybody mm-hmm. and the bouncer. Mm-hmm. And uh, one dude, I was clowning, and uh, he said, "Miss Thea, you don't belong here." And I said, "What you trying to say?" He said, "You don't belong here." Uh, he said, "You belong in the comedy club." And I at that time I didn't know no, what no comedy club was. So that we all got together, they all got together and said, we're going to take you to a comedy club. And I'll be doggone it if they didn't take me to the comedy showcase in Pasadena, Texas. And I looked at it, and it was like the, the, the most magnificent thing I had ever seen, even though it was just a simple club. And the thing that I remember is, I could do this. I think I could do this. So the next week, November the 20th, my birthday, I decide to get on stage. And all I did was talk about what happened at Steak and Egg. <laughs> and the audience was laughing. But because of my mindset, I just looked at my friends and told the jokes. The audience around me, around the everywhere, was dying laughing. And uh, the owner of the club, Danny Martinez, says, he went home that night and said, I have a star. And I didn't even know, but I knew that this was where I belong on this stage. So them taking you there changed your life. Yeah. Uh, I have a special affinity for rednecks and bikers. <laughs> I, I really do. Um, rednecks paid for my baby's Christmas. Every redneck is just a, a, is not the the way Hollywood pictures them. There's some 
I could probably hang out with the Duck Dynasty people. I probably could hang out with them just as good because they crazy as crazy quilts. <laughs> I hang. I understand country people, and I actually dig the fact that even though he said what he uh, Papa said what he meant, he said what he meant. Yeah. And they said, well, we're going to take him off the air. Well, are you talking about what he said about gays or whatever? Gays yeah. and people. You know, you're in, everybody wants you. America says we can say what we want to say, but we can say what we want to say as long as certain groups of people want to hear it. So you'd rather have, I've always sort of said that, that, you know, sometimes people will complain about stuff we say on the show or something Dieter said or whatever. And I said, wouldn't you rather get this uh, uh, out there, a public discourse uh, as opposed to just trying to silence someone. If you don't agree with what someone on the show says about gays or or whatever, let's have a discussion about it. Don't try to always silence the the. the you know person. what? That man is what seventy, eighty years old. Yeah. Uh, he ain't gonna change his opinion. Now, it, even his opinion power. I've never seen no black people I know unhappy. <laughs> Well, you don't know how many black people you how many black people you know. <laughs> you know, that's your reality. You live in a swamp. Of course you have not see nobody black unhappy. You ain't seen no black people. <laughs> you know. I I respect that their family said no patriarch, no no show. You and, you uh Thea Vidal is here with us. She's gonna be at the funny stop tonight and tomorrow yes, night. Eight and, and I'm 10 very 30. funny as well as serious and prolific. No, anyway, go ahead. You, you <laughs> well we, we were talking about what he said about gays, but you after you have this abusive marriage, you sort of had a distrust of men and yeah. you flipped over to women right yes you have done your research i know all about them you yeah. know it's all my business <laughs> you've been listening to my phone uh, I'm yeah, like, you know i work what? for the nsa uh, yeah yes you work for the nsa because where they can keep a secret <laughs> let me tell you something about i know about white people y'all can't keep nothing to yourself really uh that's why tiger wood got in trouble messing with all them white women <laughs> if he had to mess with some black woman they would have never told on him you know why they just said are you messing with Tiger Wood? Black woman would have said, I saw a tiger in the zoo. You know why? Because we know Escalade costs money. Anyway, uh, yeah. So are you now, do you only exclusively, are you with a woman? You only are with women now? Or did you ever go back to men or what happened? I had a moment where I went back to men and he did He he did the same thing. He He tried, he wanted to do the same thing. And I wanted to kill him, so we had a yin yang kind of thing. No, actually. So, are you sexually attracted to to women then, or do you just go to women because the men that you've been with have been so abusive, well, such I'm jerks? Well, I'm honest with you. I've never known love from a black man other than my children. Really? Only than my sons and my grandsons. I've never known love from a black man. So, what would I reference it from? I am at this point in my life very asexual. I am not with anyone. I'm not with male or female. I am with my grandchildren and my children. And don't you ever that. just get horny? I mean, what are you, you're I in your fifties, right? I'm fifty-seven. Don't you? Do you ever get horny still? I mean, oh uh, yeah, I get horny still. What do yeah. you think? I'm an animal. I, I uh, mean, I thought maybe that's a booty call. Uh, your phone uh, kept ringing. Uh, I thought well, maybe. Well, you know what? People are very attracted. <laughs> I I didn't say people weren't attracted to me. <laughs> I just said that I'm very leery of people. Yeah. I'm not as trusting as I once was. You have to be careful. People will break your heart just for the just for the sport of it. And I'm very cautious about my heart. I'm very guarded. Mm -hmm. So the way to protect my heart is for me to keep people at arm. In my intimate life, is to keep them at arm's length. Tell me about your husband taking out. This is the abusive husband. He tried to attack you with a machete. You say? Mm -hmm. What happened? He wanted to cut my clitoris off. Oh, are you kidding me? Who would make that up? <laughs> That's well, a hell of a story to make up. <laughs> why did he want to do that? Control issues. He wanted to, he thought you were going to cheat on him or you were going to go run off with another man or he you're pleasuring just, you yourself. Or... No, my husband was brutally mean and he liked to be mean. And that was one of his ways to do that. And he said that if I ever tried to leave him and be with another man, and plus we were fighting, and he was going, he was literally going to try and cut off my thing. 
So you're fighting with him. What yes. is he? I mean, is it a physical argument? And oh, then he it's pulls. A, it, at first, we at first it started like a joke. That's what is so funny. We were laughing and talking, and I go, he goes, well, I can, you know, we're. It, it was so weird because it was like we were talking and laughing. We come in and we were laughing, and he had said mention about some woman. He said, and we, had, I said, well. I said, well, I thought the guy that came after that was very handsome. Mm -hmm. And he just went, oh, you did, did you? And I, So I, he talks about, hey, this chick, this this woman yeah, was pretty we're, hot. Yeah, we're laughing and, and we're, yeah. pretend, we're playing. That's yeah. what I'm thinking. Yeah. <laughs> and, and little do I know, <laughs> this is a fool you can't play with. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, my husband's 10 years older than me, so I'm thinking we're giggling it up and having fun. Right. And I'm saying, you know, well, since you said that, it's funny because that guy that came so and so, he was I pretty thought sexy. He was pretty sexy himself, you know. And I'm just thinking, oh, we're just having fun. Oh no, we wouldn't. <laughs> so he gets angry. So he gets angry, and he and he says, "Oh, so you thought he was fine?" And I said, "I know in my head you could not be seriously taking what was what was meant as a joke and running with it, you know." And the next thing I know, he hits me, and I push him back, and he heads butt me, and um, I'm still standing. I remember I'm still standing and he goes and get the machete and I'm like, where in the hell did this go terribly wrong? You know? And he goes, I will cut your, you know, you, you know, your and, little man in the boat down yeah, there. right off. And, and I'm thinking I got my clients on, so I'm good, but <laughs> uh, I, I got my pants on. But if I got to kick him in his chin, that's what's going to be, you know? And we're actually tussling. And he's actually got a machete. And he's actually, that's he his wanted intention. To, he was going to try and cut it off. He, that's what he wanted to do. How did you escape? What happened? What put an end to this? I screamed and I punched him in his chest. And it, it knocked him back and he stopped. He's, I, I told him to stop and I just kind of ran out because, I mean, it just, it just, you know, when you, when you, when you're in it, you, you don't think it's going that far. You don't. Some of the fights we had, they didn't even make sense. They made no sense at all. It was like one minute we're in love and in love and and happy and giggling and joking, and the next minute we're not joking no more. Mm. You know, and he wants to, you know, this thing, you know, and then it, when you think about it. How could you hurt somebody that I was you you think this is crazy, but I was so in love with him. I was really in love with my husband. There was nothing that I wouldn't do for him. Mm -hmm. You know, um I thought the sun and the moon set on him. And he would just be if I the nicer I was to him and kinder he took it for granted, and then a mean spell would come, and he would just do an about face. Was he ever? Did he ever? Was he mean to guys too, or just you and women in general? I mean, a lot of these guys, these abusers, they'll abuse oh, women, but they, you know, oh, they don't. My, they, they my, don't squat to oh, a guy. Wait, my husband had no problem slapping the hell out of a man. Really? So he, he, uh, he was just he, a, he liked to fight. Yeah. yeah. In fact, when he buried his father, he tried to cut. His brother's hand off with a butcher knife. Jesus at the Christ! My husband was very violent. Wow! He was crazy, and I would, if I could say what it was, he was crazy as hell. <laughs> that man was crazy. I'm not lying. He fight you about a pickle. I'm not lying. <laughs> He'll fight you. Uh, you know, he would. He would. He would just. I don't know where his mind would. How'd you him. finally get out of it? What was the last straw? Why? I mean, uh, you I were a, young. This obviously was a horrible situation, but you stayed married for what ten years or something? Mm -hmm. What was the last straw? I dreamed that my children saw me dead on the kitchen floor, and I was telling Bill that I thought because we go to church and stuff. <laughs> my husband helped build the church we went to. <laughs> Um, I told Bill, I said, um, um, I, I need us not to fight. I need us 
to be loving to each other and I need you to stop hitting you I want I want you to to stop he said I'm always gonna beat you and he was trying to take comedy away from me and I couldn't let him take that I couldn't let him I couldn't give up stand up I couldn't give it up that was my passion I mean I found my place right I found a reason why it's a reason why I'm crazy. It's a reason why I make people laugh everywhere I go. It's a reason why people think I'm entertaining. I'm supposed to be here. And um, he said, I, I don't want you to do it. And it was like, it broke my heart. And every, every night I went to open mic, every night he tried to beat it out of me. And then finally, you just had enough. I just had enough. And you left him. And I told him, I said, um, he told me, he said, I'm always going to beat you. Wow. He said, let me put, say it in the proper words, the way he said it. You say, you see me? Me all the time going to beat you because you're too happy. Oh, my God. You're too happy. Me all the time going to beat you. And I thought about that. I go, wow. So we're not never going to be like we could be so loving on a continuum. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden he would say, you're too happy. You're too happy. You need to be beat. He must have had some mental issues, obviously. But, uh, well, I'm, I'm glad that you got out of that. Unfortunately, now you can you'd probably never have a relationship with a man. You'll never trust a man ever again. because I don't trust too many women. I don't, I'm going to be honest with you because really I'm a person who likes really butchy girls. And um, I think I, when I dated women, I dated butchy girls. I love butchy girls. You show me a girl that can ride a Harley, and I'll show you. A, <laughs> I'll show you a heifer I can cook. I'm making breakfast, and um, um, I mean, I've, I've, and I don't, I don't date. I've dated some pretty women, some beautiful, masculine-like women, and I think they're very sexy. There's something very sexily sexy about a masculine. Lipstick lesbian is something romantic about them. Very Jeffrey, you love Thea Vidal. Jeffrey's, Jeffrey loves you. She's going to be at the Funny Stop Comedy Club tonight and tomorrow night. Um, did Which, you know that she was in the W? His other, he has two passions. Yeah, she played. Um, she played. Um, Mama Benjamin in the WWE. I think in the yes. late nineties. I remember that. I remember. Some I of have never got to did. stab and hit white men like I did, <laughs> uh, and not go to jail. It was just a beautiful moment. And you know what? Let me tell you a story. This is true. You know, Mama Benjamin had um, a heart attack, right? Okay, so um, and I have a smoomoo on, right? So I fall out, and my mumu goes up. Yeah. So I'm laying there, and I'm going, put my dress down, put my dress down. <laughs> my mother is watching, put my dress down. And that's so funny, because I loved, I loved the WWE. I would go back to the WWE, and let me just say for the record, ladies, Vince McMahon's body is something to behold. You love it. I love it. I touched it. Several times. Would you t would you take a lipstick lesbian or Vince McMahon? Ooh. At the lipstick lesbian was a wrestler <laughs> <laughs> and taller than me and stronger. <laughs> I like strong. I just like physically strong women like that. Um, oh, I just feel like Dina Damsel and Sebastian. It's nothing wrong that it's nothing wrong. Vince McMahon. I would like to see how he kisses. How did you end up in the WWE? How did this even come about? I went to an open call. Oh, really? Uh huh. They were looking for a Southern mother. Is this is this before or after your television show, Thea? After my television. Really? show. Really? So that you go in there and and they probably have every woman in the world trying out, but you actually have a little bit of experience. And, yes. Uh, and they go, this could be great. Yeah. And I did it, and it was fun. I have never seen so many audience. The audience is incredible. They're just out there. They're just out there. They're insane. They're right? insane. And I know they know this not real. <laughs> I know they know. You know, really, be really. You know damn well if I hit you in the head with a chair when you wake up, you gonna want to shoot me. Quit playing. You know you ain't gonna let me just jump on your head and I still be alive and I'm not gonna do nothing to you. I got. 
got a razor in my boot. What's wrong with you? You ain't going to hit me in my face with a chair and then push me out the rain and my booty is all up in the air. But they, they really, see, I, I'm not into wrestling, but the, the wrestling, uh, the WWE does a lot of stuff with us. And they go, I, I told them, I go, I'm not really that into wrestling, but we'll bring some of the wrestlers in. They go, you need to come to a show, Rover. You'll love it. And I go, I, I really didn't want to go. And I went, we sat, they gave us literally a front seat ringside. It was, I, I, I don't know if I would go back because I'm not a wrestling fan, but it was quite the experience to see. I, I mean, these people are maniacs. They are friggin' maniacs who are so into this. And they're yelling and screaming at like whoever all these guys are that come out and they're you know scream you suck you pussy. Mm -hmm. I'm like oh my god these did guys. Did you just say that on the radio? I did. Yeah. Oh my god. Yes. If I'd have cussed, I'd have been able to cuss a long time ago. Well, uh, yeah, there's only a couple words that you could say. You can't, oh, that word you can say. One, but but oh well, wait god. a second. That's only the context if of the word that you right. used. Only if you're calling someone a pussy, you couldn't use that if you were to say something like, "Hey, come eat my that." No, I would never fly. say that. Because I'm waiting. I'm saving myself for someone special. I don't know who it is. I'm waiting. Jeffrey because LaRoque. Yes. Je That's why I wasn't married. You're married. I'm not breaking up no homes. What's wrong no, no, with you? No, I'm just saying, I'm saying, saying if I wasn't married. Well, I wouldn't do it because you're okay. married. Jeffrey, I respect Jeffrey that. has what's called the poon posse. He oh, is God. married, but he has a bunch of women who, surround, for whatever reason, they love him. He has a redhead, an Asian. He even had a girl fly over who listens to the show in Australia fly over just to meet him. He's so he's a hoe. He is quite. <laughs> his wife. Why don't you tell her the story about your? Uh, yeah, here's uh, some artwork for the Poon Posse there, Thea. Oh and, uh, my God! They were just, they were just friends even of mine, and they, and they just made. you know uh, lumped them all together and everything, and uh huh. You know uh, what I mean, and um. If, and so, like, how long did it take you to recover after your wife whooped your ass? <laughs> well, it took me a while before, after my wife whooped, okay, whooped look, my ass. Okay, because let me tell you something. Half a lot to give somebody you ain't going to be with no more. I just want to put that out there. And you got kids. And you need to be uh, the poon posse or whatever <laughs> you want to call them. You, you better know your... You see, you couldn't be tell with me. Tell Thea, before we let Thea go, tell her, tell her about your wife. Give her the story. Well, what did you catch your wife doing? Well, um, oh, there was Lord. a point. There, well, I, I, uh -huh. I, I was hoping to not to have to bring this up, but la uh, early last year, um, a listener found my wife fooling around on dating sites. What? Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Was she typing or was she there? No, she was um, on the on the websites. I don't know. She told me she was, you know, trying to find a. You know, a guy for her mom because her mom's widow and everything. But and, then what happened? You, uh, I mean, it progressed past the dating yeah, sites, right? You know, come Unfortunately, on, come on. Uh, so she, it was found out that some random shit she'd brought, you know, random guys into the house. and What? Yeah. Do you so, want me to whoop her ass? And uh, <laughs> I, w I was very, very upset about it. And, but uh, he's still together with this woman. Well, how long? You, you've been with her how long? I've been with her uh, 14 years. Okay. 15 all together, because we dated for about a year, but I've been married okay. to her for 14 okay. years. Okay. It's so you found out that she invaded the space that was that you and her space, right? Now, see, now I'm going to tell you what, I, I, this, I'm telling you this, uh, not, it, let's, ex, let's take my husband out the equation, my ex-husband out the equation. A regular black man would have beat that that bitch to death. That's what she would be. They they'd have beat her. They'd have beat her, or they would have got their sisters to be your wife. Uh, if I, I'm gonna be honest with you, because see, once there's a line. I mean, you cheat, you cheat outside the house. You don't cheat. You don't bring them dogs in there. Mm -hmm. That's where you made your babies in that bed. You don't do that. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with your wife. You seem like a nice guy. No, it's a girl. No, 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 no. He, she said, "You oh, seem like a nice guy." She's bread, mom. <laughs> she's on <laughs> bread. Oh <laughs> my God! Keep up with the conversation. <laughs> Look here, boy. Look here. You seem like a very nice gentleman. Thank you. And I appreciate your 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 being a fan of mine. But Listen, he loves you. you. Um, but you don't let no woman uh, uh trick. You ain't nobody's trick. And where a horse can go, jackass can go. Now I'm not firm. I'm not. I'm not saying two right, two wrongs make it. Uh, two wrongs make it right, but a damn show make it even. But I'm saying, <laughs> I'm saying you can keep your poon posse. And uh, but he doesn't I, actually sleep with any of the poon posse. He's I never know, slept but with that's anyone. just that's just you know I, the internet is just getting more people in trouble. 
It's so easy now that uh, you have I'm, an ex-girlfriend, ex-boyfriend, or whatever, or you just want to hook up with a random. It's, you just it can't, ruins it. You people, I'm going to tell you something. Stop stay your tail off Facebook telling all your business and stuff. <laughs> Them people ain't your friends. That's some nosy people that's bitter and bored and they don't have nothing else to do but get on Facebook. I actually saw a girl. She she had liked our page on Facebook. We have a Facebook page. And it was, it was a picture Were of a- Were you naked? No, no. It was a picture of a hot girl. And so I love to like click on these girls who like our page- and just look through their pictures. I love it. I like, you know, so I look through this chick's pictures. I go, oh, man, this chick is hot. Then I look at the number of friends that she has. She has like 1,800 Facebook friends. I go, this chick, Ho. it's crazy. I mean, it, no one has 1,800 friends. It's ridiculous. I don't ridiculous. know three I like. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, some of y'all, um, some of you, I'm um, not trying to be mean to you or saying nothing bad about you. But if you come to the comedy show, you might can find some true love. You know, come make your man spend some money, have dinner and stuff down in, in Cuyahoga Falls and That's stuff, right. and have a romantic evening. Now, if your man think a romantic evening is uh, bringing you some, bringing you a flower and you laying down on the sofa. Uh, that ain't a romantic evening, <laughs> and that's old, cheap, dirty, stanky, you know what. <laughs> now, let me tell you something. I'm going to be telling you, ladies, what you need to do. And you men, I'm going to tell you how to conquer your woman. Because some of you men don't know how to conquer. You walk around wearing pink shirts, looking all fat. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with you. If I see one man wearing a pink shirt, I'm slapping him. I'm telling you right now. Oh, I remember and that don't, one. It, it and was don't in... start coming up to me talking about pink is the new black. No, that's like me saying plaid is the new black. No, <laughs> black is just black. Okay? Um, knock it off. I, I want to see some masculine men out there yes. dressed, looking sexy with a pretty woman. Uh, ladies, you don't have to wear heels because it's icy out there and you fall on your butt. And it's very unattractive. Although a man will dust your butt off for you. And if you are a lesbian and you drive a Harley, it is winter time. So I don't know and if you, you can drive a Harley. You don't have anything to prove you, to me. You but come... if you drive a 4x4, four four, you can still come and see me. <laughs> and, um, uh, or, or play basketball. I like basketball playing. I've dated three All-Americans. Really? Yes, I have. Wow. I've dated the second woman to play on the uh, Harlem Globetrotters. Really? I've dated a bodybuilder with two of them. And, two, uh, two body, you don't think those women are too big, too muscular? You like that, huh? I like the fact that you can pick me up. I mean, <laughs> I like, yeah, in fact, I like any man that can pick me up. If you, That's what I like about wrestling. Do you know how many men can pick me up and didn't have no back problems? You just can't just get that anywhere. Yeah, I tried my I, hand I at that day. Though, last, I think, yeah, but I think about Boy, a summer ago, I tried my hand at that. Oh, yeah, he wanted to be an amateur wrestler. All right, all right. Oh, you ain't big enough to kick nobody's ass. <laughs> Sit down. No, but I remember. Walk around, the, rock around the ring with the card. Shut up. You can't <laughs> wrestle. All right, listen, I have to let Thea go. She uh, has two shows uh, tonight, uh, 8 o'clock and 10.30 tonight. I never, I never leave my house. I, I'm, I'm a Are recluse. You recluse. Yeah, I am. I well, am. let me tell you something. If you come to the show tonight, I'll show you a trick or two. Ooh, all right. You have big fun, boy. <laughs> I can do things you never thought. You'd break thought. me, right? I will. <laughs> She'll break you like a stick. <laughs> nah, uh, man up. Man uh, up, chicky baby, man up. Thea is uh, at the Funny Stop tonight, 8 o'clock, 10.30. Yes. Uh, tomorrow, 8 o'clock and 10.30. And I like chocolate strawberries, by the way, just in case you want to know. If I like you chocolate, bring those. chocolate strawberries. And since I'm by myself, you can bring me a card and some chocolate strawberries. Because she is spending Valentine's Day with you uh, tonight. By myself. Uh, 1757 State Road in Cuyahoga Falls. For tickets, call 330 330-923-4700. That's 330-923-4700. And Pete's going to be there. You may not understand what he said, but he's going to be there. He's a guy that owns a place, and he, he has like a weird, weird accent he's, and a yes, very has, gregarious guy. And yes, he is. He will talk to you and tell you things. And his brother is very, is very, is um, very well off, and he's single, and he's looking for a clean no. Christian girl. Well, she wanted to be a Christian, but she, cause she be clean, just <laughs> be clean and um, 
you know, like stripper tendencies. And um, I'm just trying to help them get married off. That's all I'm trying to do because love is in the air. It's in the air tonight. It's certainly, I'm looking in Jeffrey's eyes. I see love in the air there. He and that's loves- right. Where am all my Buddha heads? Come on out here, Buddha heads. <laughs> uh, all right. I have to take a quick break. Thea, thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. And uh, you did research on me. I can't believe you. Well, uh, we try here. We're professional. Come on. No, but I thought you were going to... I was very surprised. Well, I hope you were pleasantly surprised. I was very pleasantly surprised. And I am a survivor, so I, I have a good time. What life. would you say, last thing, because we talked about abuse. Thea's very funny, by the way, but we talked about all this abuse stuff. It's not the funniest stuff in the world. But <clears throat> if a woman is getting abused by her husband right now, what do you say? I'm going to tell you this, and this is keeping it 100. You know what? I thought in the first the first first year first two years he was jealous and that he was in love with me and that he was just you know you think when you're young you think he's jealous and he's captain courageous for some reason women are delusional like that let me tell you something baby girl it ain't gonna get no better he gonna beat you until he crucifies you yeah you could end up dead and you can end up dead and let me just say this for the men out there beating your women every time you beat her you kill a little bit of her soul and she has your children. You, the greatest gift you can give your woman is showing your children how much you love her. You ain't got to beat on her. You ain't got to holler at her. If you don't want to be with her, then leave her. That's right. They call it leaving. Leave. And for you sisters, your families of of women that get beat, let me tell you something. Don't give up on them. Help them escape. Thea Vidal, very uh, wise words from her. Jeffrey, you love her. She... Are you happy, Jeffrey? Oh, yeah. He's My gonna... wife is going to be insanely jealous. You got to meet Thea Vidal. <laughs> you tell that hoe she's better play her position. <laughs> she's come up and come out what I got to do. You, uh, she knows she don't want none of this. Oh, no. Because yeah. I will give me yeah, that ass. The, yes, that's right. She'll that's be... right. Don't be hurting my boo-boo. <laughs> All right, I have to take a quick break. We'll be right back on Rover's Morning Glory. Hang on. Rover's Morning Glory.